So everybody wants to do a little bit more for the environment. That's awesome. But what is greenwashing? So this past week, a really interesting article popped up in my newsfeed. And locally where I live, I am in Vancouver, and close to me in my home city is Victoria, British Columbia. The University of Victoria, that is our capital city in our province here in Canada, they did a study on a claim made by Keurig, the coffee company Keurig, Keurig Canada, on its real recycling ability of the, the disposable pods that, that you get for a Keurig machine. And this is fascinating because they had done a, a research study and they had looked at what the company Keurig was saying that they, their pods are for their environmental impact and how recyclable they are and where that can be done and so on and so forth on their packaging. And they came to find that what they were stating was nowhere near close to the truth of actually what was recyclable in, in their products. And you know they did their law investigation and it was thorough and in depth and they applied to the, a body that governs these things in our country of Canada. And Keurig was found to be responsible for, for basically misleading uh, information and that they now had to pay a $3 million fine and reverse a bunch of the marketing which they've done and inform people that you know, what they had said before wasn't actually true and that their pods are really not environmentally friendly to anywhere near the degree of what they said before. And this is an example of greenwashing. And I found this really fascinating because, you know, I've been challenged several times on, you know, what do we do in selling cookware that could possibly be greenwashed? And I've brought up many times on this channel and to customers that, you know, what people say around cookware can be really misleading. And I've called companies out. I have made videos on companies in which try to say they are much more green than others, but I've also been challenged. Like what else could there be? And so I'm thoroughly going through the things in which we sell to, to look at exactly that, you know, things in which could be more harmful or damaging, you know, what are they? And how do I do that? How do I figure these things out? So one of the things in which I think was, was quite fascinating is that these guys here, there's, this is called a Skoy scrubber, and there's also Euro scrubbers. Um, they were something that were really fascinating to me. So these were billed to me of being environmentally friendly. So these are a plastic-like scrubber. You know, this guy comes in a package of two, they're wrapped here, packaged in, in America. But these are made in Poland, and they're very, very rough. And I've sold thousands and thousands of these things because I was told that they are an environmentally friendly scrubber. And so I was like, oh sure, if they're environmentally friendly, then that's great, I should sell them. But I came to thinking with these guys, because what happens when you use them is that they break down and become very, very, very soft and then get to a point where they don't work anymore and you chuck them out. And so I was like, well, you know, what's going on there? They feel like plastic and they wear out and I'm using them in the sink. So, you know, is this some sort of microplastic? So I spoke to our friend, Zach Hudson, who is a doctor of polymer science at University of British Columbia here in Vancouver. And I asked him about that. I'm like, you know, hey, Dr. Hudson, like what's happening when these break down? And he was very clear with me that he's like, it's really, really, really hard to know. You know, like I, to do a reverse engineering on this thing would take a huge amount of effort and money that, you know, I, I don't have to invest and no one else is going to. So the claim by, the vendor here is that these are a plant-based resin and that they're environmentally friendly. So I spoke to him and said, you know, could that be? And he's like, absolutely, that could be. And I was like, well, how do we find out? He's like, well, talk to the vendor. So great, I did that. I went to the importer. So these are a company called Skoy and they're in Canada. There's one called Euro Scrubbies. And I spoke to Skoy and Skoy were awesome. They gave me as much information that they had but what they've been told is what they've been told by their vendor. So these are made by a company in Poland and they shared who that was and told me everything that they had and the documentation that they've been given. Um, they, you know, to their extent had done their investigation to confirm that these were being said to them from the manufacturer, you know, environmentally friendly. 
I reached out to Euroscrubby here in Canada, zero response. I reached out to them twice, asked them specifically what I was trying to figure out, no response whatsoever. I contacted them through their website, didn't happen. No interest, I guess, in getting back to me on, hey, are these environmentally friendly? So being through Skoy, they gave me the, the vendor or the maker of these in Poland, and I reached out to them. And I was like, hey, you know, what's going on with the, the resin? You know, what is this? No response, zero response, totally ghost, that's it. So talking to Dr. Hudson, what he had said, you know, if that's usually in the environment where you get to, nobody's gonna give you a straight answer. There's usually, because there's an answer in which they don't wanna give you, right? There's, that's where the problem is. So, you know, just asking the questions of like, hey, like I see the package says it's environmentally friendly, but how, like who certifies that? And how are you saying that? Because you can say that about anything. <laughs> like I can be like, hey, you know, this really crazy heavy light bulb that I'm using in here gives me all this great light and it's really, really friendly. It's, it's not gonna damage your skin and it's gonna be really good. But like, just because I tell you it is, just because the manufacturer, wherever I got it somewhere told me that, like we need to have a little bit more rigor around the certifications when people are making a claim. If somebody's not making a claim and it's buyer beware, Fair, you know, then it's a little bit of the wild west, but you know, somebody's not trying to mislead you, not using misleading terms like environmentally friendly. Because you know, these being environmentally friendly, there's no proof that these are environmentally friendly. The plant-based resin that we're being told that they are, you know, when I talked to Dr. Hudson, we do have confirmation that formaldehyde is used in the manufacturing of these, and that the Polish government has said that they have, you know, a, the the amount of formaldehyde in them is actually fine to be sold. But when he looks at that and he's like, well, you know, the use of formaldehyde in the making of this product is problematic from his understanding of how these could and should be made if they are a completely natural, environmentally friendly product. But again, we have no knowledge. We have no understanding of, you know, what these are made from and how they're being made. So that in itself is a huge red flag. So I no longer sell these because I don't know what I'm selling you. So I can't in good conscience sell these guys. So these are no longer available from cook culture because I'm kind of scared of them. And so what my whole point here is that greenwashing happens all over the place. And that it's up to us as consumers to question a little bit more. Like if, if a company's making a claim and telling us something that sounds like it's just exactly what we wanna hear, how did that get certified? How is that as green as they say that it is? And are they just using words in which they're probably never gonna get held accounted to? Like the really amazing case with Keurig because they're, you know, they're making a pretty bold claim and it's, you know, the pod situation now has been on many people's radar for a long time. So it makes a lot of sense that you know, the, the, the lawyers at UVic, University of Victoria, would take that one on, right? I think that's low hanging fruit, that's easy. But there's tons and tons and tons of stuff throughout our you know, economy that have these labels to them. And it's worrisome. You know, if we do really wanna make the best choices for our planet, we need to work harder. And I, as a retailer, reselling things to you, you know, I pledge that I will be doing my absolute best to understand where things are coming from, how they're packaged, you know, how we got them here. Can we reduce? You know, as we will consume, we're a consuming society, we need things to use in our lives. How can we reduce our impact on our planet as we make those choices? You know, and no one's gonna be perfect. I'm gonna do my best, but I'm not gonna be perfect. So I'm not asking anybody to try to be perfect, but you know, where can we challenge and question? And if a company can give us the answers we want and they can stand behind their product, Awesome, let's advocate for them. Let's promote those people. Let's help others understand where those real green companies are and not those green wash companies. So thank you so much. I hope this is helpful. Comments below, take care.